Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a white, red and green or Naya colored exile deck which combines some of the new discover cards with cards we already had in standard such as Pia and Taroko which synergize incredibly well with the new discover mechanic. So Quintorius a new planeswalker at 5 mana starts out on 4 loyalty so we can immediately minus 3 to discover 4 which will likely hit some of our awesome creatures or removal spells and then the passive ability says whenever we cast a spell from exile Quintorius deals 2 damage to each opponent and we gain 2 life so that will automatically trigger if we cast a spell using the discover mechanic and then the plus 1 ability can make a steady supply of 3-2 spirit tokens potentially enabling the minus 6 ultimate to replay spells from our graveyard while maybe also enabling Quintorius's passive ability. And then another Discover card is the Geological Appraiser, is wreaking havoc in Explorer, but still quite good in this standard build as a 3-2 creature that lets us discover 3 when we cast it. So if we happen to play Quintorius, discover 4 and hit Appraiser, this will discover 3, so we get to trigger Quintorius's passive twice, which is quite nice. And then other creatures that will benefit from the Discover mechanic are PNLR and Orocco. Pia making a 1-1 Thopter token whenever we cast a spell from exile, and Pia gives our Thopter tokens haste as well, so that can also add up very quickly once we start discovering a few times. And then a Rocco Street Chef is arguably the more important card in the deck. A 2-4 saying at the beginning of our end step each player exiles the top card of their library until our next end step each player may play the card they exiled this way. And whenever any player plays a land or casts a spell from exile we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. So an incredibly powerful effect. It may seem symmetrical since both players can play cards from exile but being able to generate those extra plus one counters and food tokens will heavily generate an advantage for us but especially if we also have a Pia or Quintorius in play we get to leverage those cards in exile way more than the opponent and then a questing druid also works quite well here can use the seek the beast adventure typically better to play it in the opponent's turn so the exiled cards will persist throughout our next turn so we've got more time to deploy them when we have more mana available and then we can also play the creature half from exile or just play the creature straight up and that will grow whenever we cast a spell that's white blue black or red so that will grow with pretty much anything we cast except for another questing druid or our six mana artifact and then a two copies of Heart Flame Duelist, which can also be played as a two mana creature, has an adventure to deal three damage, and if we play the creature it will give our instant and sorcery spells a lifelink. So this will synergize incredibly well with our 12 burn spells, since we also have two copies of Virtue of Courage, another adventure. Of course casting adventures from exile will also trigger Pia, Rocco and Quintorius, so adventures have great synergy as well. And this can deal two damage to any targets, and then later we can play the five mana enchantment, saying whenever a source we control deals non-combat damage to an opponent we may exile that many cards from the top of our library and we may play those cards this turn so initially i had more actual burn spells that can go face at one mana since those would synergize with our virtue of courage but we still have four copies of quintorius and just a passive ability from quintorius also synergizes incredibly well with the virtue of courage as we can repeatedly exile more and more cards while enabling quintorius's ability to in turn exile more cards so that's an awesome combo but i did end up uh, swapping out cards like play with fire for two copies of Torture Tower and four copies of Voltage Surge. Since we are more of a mid-range deck as opposed to a burn deck, so we want to have burn spells that can take care of larger creatures, and both of these can maybe sacrifice a food token or a thopter token in order to deal four damage with Voltage Surge and three damage with Torture Tower. So that's why we've got more copies of Voltage Surge here. And then we've got four copies of Nahiri's Warcrafting, dealing five damage to a creature, planeswalker, or battle. So perfect for taking out an opposing shield root, for instance. And if we deal excess damage, we can exile that many cards from the top of our deck, and then play a card from exile. So that can maybe help hit a land drop early on, and then later we can find additional spells as well. So also has awesome synergy throughout, even gaining five life if we have a duelist in play. So that's also quite nice. And then last but not least, one copy of the Inner Sun as kind of a fun off which can be pretty effective in the grindier matchups as we get to discover 5 at the beginning of our end step. So it will trigger the same turn we play it, can potentially discover Quintorius as well. Now having expensive cards in the deck can have some drawbacks. First off we can't discover into them with Quintorius or Appraiser, but also if we exile them early with Rocco or maybe with our Seek the Beast adventure and we don't have the mana to cast them, then of course they will go to waste. So I could easily see replacing the Inner Sun with an additional cheap card instead. And then the mana base for a three color deck will require quite a 
few dual lands, including Jetmir's Garden as a tri land, and then a mix of lands that enter the battlefield untapped early, like the fast land here, and then some lands that enter the battlefield untapped later, so we can still curve out quite well. And then I'm also playing one of each channel land for added interaction. I've got a couple legendaries to discount them as well. And then one copy of the bivouac as a creature land, which can also be quite nice in those grindier matchups against control. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, our hand seems acceptable. Got a bit of removal. And then Hiroko and Questing Druid can provide more card advantage. Not opposed to just playing Questing Druid as a creature, since it's going to grow pretty steadily over time. And uh, might want to save Virtue of Courage for cards like Thalia and other impactful 2-drops. And then with the Rocco, we've got more ways of generating card advantage and growing Questing Druid. Take 2 for now. And there's Thalia. I think I still like Rocco first. If they exile it with a Brutal Cathar, we've got a backup. So it's not a disaster. Adlin's a good one. Although at least we'll get a counter out of it. And then uh, Quintorius we won't be able to cast here, sadly. I think I'll still put a counter on Rocco. Okay, land is good, so we could take out Adlin with the Warcrafting, that's probably the play. And then we wouldn't be able to play the Questing Druid here. Now that we have more mana, we'll be able to cast almost every spell we exile with Rocco. Adversary is still good to take out with Virtue. So we can take out Thalia and take out Adversary as well. And that's enough for a concession. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable, especially against creature decks with lots of spot removal here. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one Epic here. Just gonna play Pia. Hope it survives. Warcrafting can be a way of enabling it, but that will require a bit more mana. This attack implies Monstrous Rage, which I don't really want to trade Pia for Epicure when we have all these burn spells in hand. Now we can pass and then probably punish some pump spells. Another Swiss Pier. So I want to block the Epicure. Opponent lots of damage happens, so this might be a play with fire instead. Which, yeah, if they finish off PI, I get to take out double Swiss Spear in response. Opponent does nothing. Yeah, in that case, I could fire off one Voltage Surge just to see if they respond, or I can untap. That way, play with fire goes to waste as well. Alright, and then now Warcrafting, maybe find a land and enable Pia, can still maybe play Burn Spell afterwards. I'll take the Bivouac, so I wouldn't be able to keep up a Burn Spell now, but I do get to make a Thopter. Don't think I'm blocking with Pia now that I'm a shield down, so I might as well attack. And now we've got a Thopter to sack to a Voltage Surge or Torch the Tower. Put in discarding Godric, so they're digging towards a third lane. And 
and another Epicure. Appraiser's nice. So let's start there. Finding another Pia. That one's a little awkward, but we'll just put it in hand. Casting it would have generated a Thopter, but then we lose Pia, which I don't think is worth it. So... Now we could just pass a turn with blockers and burn spells available. And the festivities, dealing one to everything. So we could respond by torching Swiss Pier, so that if they do have another instance, it still dies, unless that instance, I guess, is Monstrous Rage, in which case I would need to Voltage Surge. Sacking the Thopter, which is going to die anyways. And then I'm okay blocking Epicure with Pia. Quintorius is perfect. I'm going to discover so we can gain life and trigger Pia, which will generate a blocker for Phoenix Chick. Another Pia. Alright, this one I might actually cast just to get the Quintorius trigger and extra Thopter token. So we got a bit unlucky with our discovers. Now we might see Monstrous Rage trample over the Thopter to take out Quintorius or some other burn spell. Getting Virtue of Courage going with Quintorius would have been fun. And there's Godric. Definitely take that trade. So now we would have to use two burn spells to finish off Godric. I think that's still okay here. So let's go with Virtue and Torch. Even though Torch could be better against Squee, as it can exile it for good. So maybe I'll just Voltage Surge after all. And we can start attacking. Opponent does have Questing Druid as well. So they are playing green, maybe for some pump spells and scamp. And there's Questing Druid, so we can torch that one. And keep up the pressure, and that's enough for concession, animate bivouac, attack, and that's going to be 8 damage, so almost lethal, but we're pretty far ahead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty slow hand, admittedly, but being on the play might make up for it. And then our late game is going to be pretty strong with Quintorius. Okay, so green aggro with Ginger Brutes. And our Rock on turn 3 is going to be very nice. Turn 2, Tough Cookie, so food deck. Yeah, I'll play Rocco. Just getting that going seems important. The opponent's deck may not have a ton of removal. And then we're hoping for an untapped lane so we can play Appraiser. If not, might go for Warcrafting, find a land with it. A Zoetic Glyph on the food token, interesting. Turns it into a 5-4, so I'll take it. Can answer it with a Warcrafting still. Although we only get to dig one card deep for a land. We found one. That's lucky. Glyph gets to Discover, finds a Counterspell. So they can still put that one in hand. The upside of Discover over Cascade. But yeah, as I've said, if we can keep Rocco around, it can kind of win the game by itself. Another land coming up, so next turn we can play Quintorius. Although we'll have to take that counter spell into account. So I might go for some instant speed plays instead. Fine stock grows Rocco. 
up to a 4-6. So now even another Zoetic Glyph is not that scary. I guess on the Ginger Brute they can make it unblockable. And that's what they go for. Alright, so I can resolve Quintorius if I'd like. And uh, even though we're probably going to lose it to the Ginger Brute, that might be worth it. Could also get lucky and exile Anahiri's Warcrafting and cast it. Or even a Voltage Surge would be enough. Find a Praiser, that's excellent. So we get a whole bunch of triggers here. And there's a Warcrafting, perfect. More triggers, start growing the Appraiser. And we've already played Land for a turn, I believe. Glyph discovers a Wormlet. And I should probably attack with Rocco, even though we might lose Quintorius, we've got a backup. A lot of food tokens to go around, a Voltage Surge, another nice one-mana answer with plenty of artifacts to sacrifice. I don't think the game's gonna go long enough for us to play Virtue of Courage alongside Quintorius, but that's another great combo. Get to deal non-combat damage with Quintorius passive, exile more cards off the top, so that can provide a ton of card advantage. And yeah, that's enough for a concession, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's a little slow to get going with two tapped lands. At least we can torch on turn two. And then Pia's pretty good with Appraiser and Warcrafting, so I'll give it a shot. Ideally, we find an untapped land so we can play Pia on turn two. Up against Red Aggro. Yeah, Exiling Phoenix Chick is good value too, but we'll wait and see if they have a scary two drop instead. So no blocks, and then even if they had a Monstrous Rage, we would not get punished here. Alright, land is good, play Pia, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can curve Appraiser into Quintorius while making Thopters. Lightning Strike takes out Pia, but we've got a backup. Yeah, I'll go for Pia, keep up Torch. And then next turn, Warcrafting, taking out a smaller creature can also help hit our land drop. Godric, yep. So no blocks. And then... See if our opponent has a pump spell they want to play. Probably gonna end up torching the Phoenix Chick. Even though my Thopters can block it at some point. Okay, so at the very least we can play Gorge, but we might be able to play a land from exile and make a Thopter. And then Pia can attack, I'll keep the Thopter back. Squee, yep. And a Felden, so I can block the 1-1 one -one token from Squee. So keeping Pia back might have worked out a little bit better. That's alright. I think Appraiser is probably going to be better value unless we discover another Pia, but we've got a lot of other great hits. Such as Questing Druid, which, um, yeah, we can exile top two cards, maybe hit an untapped red source for Voltage Surge, but I would have to play those cards now. Just putting the extra body in play could also be better. And then next turn, Quintorius. We've got our defenses up. If we put Appraiser in front of Squee, they still trade even through a Monstrous Rage. And then Quintorius can start gaining life back. Okay, Twisted Fealty stealing Pia, that's pretty scary. And a play with fire. Okay, so that's a lot of damage coming across now. So, let's see, could take 7, just trade here, we get Pia back and then next turn we can start gaining life, don't hate that. Okay, 
Find a Praiser, perfect. So we get another Pia trigger that way. And another Quintorius trigger, more importantly. And the Warcraft thing can deal with Squee. Probably don't want to deal 5 to Felden. And uh, don't think we've played a land yet, so can still play that from Exile. And then opponents at 14. Can probably start setting up a couple attacks. Just want to make sure we don't die to Squee coming back and a Monstrous Rage or something along those lines. Since they have a pretty full graveyard. I guess we can kind of take a slower approach here. Since we're pretty far ahead. Opponent gets back Squee. So Questing Druid can go in front of Squee. Appraiser on Felden, perhaps, and then trade here. Opponent did find a couple burn spells. They can take out Quintorius. Goes to finish off Questing Druid. And Rocco can gain us more life as well. Maybe keep one Thopter back. If we deal three, opponent falls to seven. Next turn we should be able to end the game. And uh, the Inner Sun might even show up in time. Uh, Godric, that's fine. Can just sack a Thopter to take it out. Or we can block and then... Finish it off, and that's enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Got a couple options early on. Can play Duelist as a two-mana creature, could Virtue something. Or now Questing Druid. I'm kind of liking just playing it as a creature. If we're up against a blue counterspell deck, getting a threat in play early is important. And we'll hopefully have Rocco for more card advantage. Our opponent considers. Our burn spells don't always line up great against larger creatures. Unless we've got an artifact in play to sacrifice to Voltage Surge, we can maybe take out a Haughty Djinn with that. So, if we want to be mana efficient, we play Rocco. Rocco is probably the more important card to resolve over Pia. So there is an argument for maybe baiting out a counter spell with Pia. But we might be able to double spell with it later too. So I'll just play Rocco anyways. Because Rocco exiling counter spells with the ability is, uh, of course, going to make it difficult for the opponent to keep up appearances. But they had a scatter ray. Okay, now we could double spell Pia and Duelist. So counter spell is not as bad. And then wait to play Appraiser until we have hopefully a Pia in play. Can pay for Make Disappear. Okay, let's just play the Duelist. Don't care if this one gets countered as much. Could see a Bounce spell on the Questing Druids, although then we can still use the Adventure later to trigger Pia. Our opponent goes digging. Okay. So they might deploy a cheap Tolarian Terror or Haughty Djinn with Counterspell backup. Okay, so next up we can start by attacking, see if there's a response, and then maybe play Appraiser's second main, even though we potentially miss out on a Thopter attack and a plus one counter, since they might end up interacting here. Don't think I'm playing a five mana Virtue of Courage. Could also just play Appraiser and see what happens. And at the very least, trigger Questing Druid. Ah, uh, sure, let's play the Appraiser. If we discover a removal spell, we can simply put it in hand.
All right, and that's enough for a concession. They may not have found a counterspell for appraiser, and the questing druid's getting out of hand. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems keepable. I've got a good amount of interaction with a few burn spells early. And then our late game with Quintorius could also be a lot of fun. Facing a red aggro from the looks of it. If we can wait to play Duelist and then Warcrafting to gain 5 life, that would be great too. Probably gonna just use Virtue of Courage. Upon choosing to make a treasure here. Yeah, if I play Virtue this turn cycle, then next turn I can go Duelist plus Voltage Surge and maybe gain 2 right away. Thundering Raichu, that's a good one. So we'll wait for that to attack so we can take out Scoundrel if they hopefully place a counter on us so we don't take as much damage. Okay, so now I think I switch game plan. Instead of trying to gain life with Duelist, we just use the Adventure now while the opponent's tapped out. since we're missing double red for Warcrafting as well. And then next turn maybe play Duelist and a Voltage Surge, a smaller creature. Another Raichu is scary, so we'll need another red source for Warcrafting now. Alright, it's tapped, so for now I can still play Duelist, maybe take out a smaller creature. But Raichu will grow up to a 5-5, still within range of Warcrafting, luckily. Phoenix check, we don't mind. So again, probably going to wait for them to place a counter on Phoenix check, potentially, since then Raiju would deal more damage with the ability. Could see burn spell on Duelist in response, but at this point we mostly care about containing the opponent's threats. And yeah, play with fire will take it out. That's fine. So no life gain. Would have been awesome with the Warcrafting. But if we can deal with Raiju and then play Quintorius, that's probably still gonna be good enough. Get to dig one card deep for a land, hopefully. There's no land I can keep up that's relevant. I guess a white source is better than a green source, so we can still maybe play Pia and actually hit a Rockfall Veil. Perfect. So now Pia can maybe block a Mishra's Foundry. And then hopefully we're still in time to stabilize with Quintorius times two. Lightning Strike goes after Pia, so they're not trying to burn us out yet. Foundry gets busy. So if we discover with Quintorius and hit a removal spell, that would not be ideal since we can't take out Foundry. And then we also wouldn't gain any life. So, possible I'm better off just making a Spirit or playing Rocco, which can eventually gain us some life back. And then I could also exile an instant speed removal spell I can still cast. If our opponent plays something from exile, I can sack a food to gain three. Or we can play Quintorius, make a Spirit token, which is also totally reasonable here. Sure. It's a bit more mana efficient. And then next turn we can maybe discover. Could still die to a combination of burn spells here. Play with fire. Puts us to four. And a Thundering Raichu off the top. That's a good top deck here. I'm gonna have to chum block. And find Pia. So I think it's time for Hiroko, Pia, and then discover with Quintorius. And then, even if it's not a great card that I discover, I might still cast it just to gain the life and make the Thopter token. Alright, Voltage Surge. So this would have been awesome if we already had an artifact in play to sacrifice. Sadly, we get them after casting Voltage Surge. So plus one counter on, let's see, 
maybe Pia. And then we can jump Raichu with the Thopter token. So at least we're at six. Bowden finds Swiss Spear. And then now we can try and stabilize. Counter on, I want to say, Rocco now. So one unknown card in hand. Opponent can animate Mishra's Foundry. Counter on Swiss Spear. So we could double block Raiju, jump Swiss Spear. If they picked up Witch Docker Frenzy, they might have wanted to cast it before blockers were declared, but I guess if we do go for double block Raiju, they can punish that pretty nicely. Whereas I could just jump Raiju and then put, let's say, Rocco in front of Swiss Spear. Could also double block Swiss Spear. So we're more likely to take it out if they can enable prowess. This way I could die to Monstrous Rage, but if they had Monstrous Rage, they probably would have animated Foundry as well. So they could have still cast it for one mana afterwards. So I'm not putting them on Monstrous Rage necessarily. It is a Lightning Strike after all, okay. So they get to take out Rocco, but we already got our two food tokens. Got a backup Pia. So we could now play Appraiser which will trigger Quintorius most likely. Sanking food tokens, also reasonable play, and then Virtue can go upstairs. Could play the enchantment Virtue of Courage, but I feel like we're a little bit too far behind for that right now. So let's go for Appraiser. Another reasonable line is make a spirit, play another Quintorius, and discover. But this puts more bodies into play, and I'll just play the creature here even though hitting a land would be nice. Yeah, I guess maybe there was higher upside. Use the Adventure, exile top two cards. If we then hit a land, we can still play the Questing Druid. But yeah, her opponent's now too far behind. We get to gain life with Quintorius, make Thopters with Pia. So there's not much they can top deck now. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play and our hand's a little slow to get going, but I think I still like to keep can start with the garden probably. Turn two we can torch, play bivouac. Facing an aggressive creature deck, which yeah, that's kind of the matchup we like to face with this deck. I won't be able to torch Thalia if it shows up, so it might be okay to just take out the officer now. Next turn, probably going to play Rocco anyways. Can play the Gorge. Okay. Exiling Pia, nice, and our opponent to land. So next turn we could play the Creature Questing Druids and then play Pia, putting a counter on it. We'll see if they have an answer to Rocco. A Knight Errant is going to Convoke, but only tapping two creatures, so won't be able to find Brutal Cathar. Finds Thalia instead. Alright, so we can stick to the plan here. Play Questing Druid. We've got more card advantage with Quintorius, so just want a board presence. And then we trigger both Rocco and Questing Druid. And uh, Rocco is probably large enough already. I guess one more counter would help against an Anthem effect bumping Knight Errands up to 5 power. But then I'll still be able to Warcrafting later. So let's just grow the Questing Druid some more. My next turn can play Quintorius. And then make two Thopters with Pia. One from the land, one from Discover. Opponent does now have a Brutal Cathar, so probably gonna see that in action. I imagine going after Rocco. So let's keep growing Questing Druids. And 
and they could convoke another Knight Errant, goes for an attack instead. Yeah, I think we take it. Alright, back up Rocco, but let's still go for Quintorius. Likely to either find removal or another creature to help block. The only awkward one would be another Pia. Voltage Surge can now deal 4 damage, but I think I still prefer freeing Rocco. So we don't have to sacrifice anything. And this is a lot of triggers. Yeah, the deck's pretty fun when it gets going. And we could certainly start attacking, but honestly we're fine just playing a longer game where we leverage all these synergies. So I'm just gonna pass it back. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Our opponent's just getting buried in permanence here. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, a keepable hand. Rocco, one of our more important cards. We've got early removal. Facing turn 1 Swiss Spear. So I could play Forge so I can Voltage Surge it. But then next turn I don't have a great play lined up. So I think I'm better off just playing Tamped Garden and then turn 2 maybe Virtue of Courage to Swiss Spear. And turn 3 Rocco. Felden, I don't really want to damage. Could also play the creature half of Questing Druid which will grow steadily over time. But then we do end up taking quite a bit of damage from the opponent's creatures if they can remove it and keep attacking. So... I think I still like Virtue with a Swiss Spear before they can enable Prowess. Next turn, play Rocco. We'll see if they keep attacking into it. And then... If we can pass with Voltage Surge available, we can more safely block and potentially blow out a combat trick like Monstrous Rage. Alright, back up Rocco. Useful in case they can Witch Docker Frenzy the first one, for instance. Another reasonable line was Questing Druid as a creature plus Voltage Surge make it a 2-2, but I think Rocco just has more upside if it gets going. So yeah, Witch Docker Frenzy would still be pretty effective. Rocco grows, maybe our opponent had a plan to deal 4 damage to it, but now it's 5 toughness. We have a land in exile, so that's another counter and food token. And the food, of course, also quite useful against a burn deck. Alright, opponent's gonna smash with everyone regardless. Well, since we have a backup Rocco, we can potentially trade and then next turn play Rocco land Voltage Surge, which is still very efficient. So, blocking Swiss Spear might not be unreasonable. If they enable Prowess twice, I guess we don't trade for it. Even one Monstrous Rage would be enough to get it up to 4 toughness. So maybe we do block Felden after all. Don't expect Rocco to survive this. Also, if they play the card from Exile with Felden, it also triggers Rocco. Not only its own ability enables it. So if they go for Lightning Strike here from Exile, that would be pretty painful, as we can grow it up to 4 toughness now. So they would need another Burn spell. Alright, they had to play with Fire. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of resources to deal with Rocco. And he's just going to come right back. Playing the untapped land here means we may not have 5 mana for Quintorius next turn. But there was no real way of accomplishing that. And I think we just take out Swiss Spear now. I suppose we do have some food tokens, so this can deal 4 damage. So even if they have some tricks to enable prowess, this can still solve that problem. And it could also take out a card like Godric which is probably more important. Right, just a Phoenix Jig getting it for one, that's acceptable. We'll deal four damage here. And then now we've got untapped land Quintorius. Although we could also clear the opponent's creatures first and then play Quintorius on a more stable board so we don't lose it to a Phoenix Jig attack, which also sounds reasonable to me. So let's say we just play the Questing Druid as a creature. And then I can play a land. 
and then still Voltage Surge. Hmm. And then I guess Sanka Fu Token isn't bad. Sure. Start growing the Questing Druid. And we're happy to just sit back. Torture Tower now, another instant we can play. Exiling the Phoenix Chick means it's not gonna come back anytime. Another Godric, dies to Voltage Surge. So yeah, I think we've got this handled. Could have also responded to the celebration trigger with Torture Tower, but better to exile the Phoenix Chick. And then I don't really care how far the opponent goes digging with Felden. I guess I probably should have blocked with Rocco there. But uh, yeah, I get to play Quintorius. Discover. I guess your opponent did find a Phoenix Chick, so that can pressure Quintorius. But since we have a backup, I think that's fine. Find another questing druids, play the creature. That's a 9 life. So let's just send a questing druid for now. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game pretty easily. Mishra's Foundry, not gonna turn into a creature. Opponent's got a Charming Scoundrel instead. If you are empty-handed, Scoundrel can just draw a card, since it's discard and then draw. So if you're empty-handed, it's just gonna draw a card similar to a Seasoned Pyromancer. We've got 18 life with our food tokens here, if we've got the time to sacrifice them. So I'm not afraid of getting burnt out. Quintorius can gain more life, and we're ahead on board, so... It's gonna be tough for the red deck to recover here. Maybe a well-timed fealty to steal our creature could get it done. Opponent puts the wicked roll on Phoenix Chick after all. And a Kumano can also finish off Quintorius. So we'll take two from Phoenix Chick. Opponent's got two blockers, so we can remove one with the Warcrafting. And if we find another burn spell, take out Swiss Spear as well. Alright, that will do it. We'll keep it simple. And that's a concession. Awesome. Yeah, this uh, Naya Quintorius Exile deck has been pretty impressive so far. Although admittedly we did face almost all aggressive creature decks, whether it's red aggro or white aggro, and those are the types of matchups we actively want to face with this deck, since we have lots of cheap removal, early creatures that can get in the way, and then once we get our Quintorius, Pia, and Taroko synergies going, it's going to be pretty difficult for most aggressive decks to recover. Against other more mid-range and control decks, they can potentially go over the top, especially the domain decks with Atraxa. Those can give us some uh, issues, but other kind of more black mid-range decks with Shieldred we can still handle, since Warcrafting can deal with Shieldred, and then we usually generate more card advantage than the opponent. So yeah, all in all, this seems like a pretty powerful new addition to the standard meta that's currently a bit under explored, but uh, with the Discover mechanic and Quintorius we might have a new interesting deck on our hands. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!